by Perez Tire Center, Aces Bail Bonds, Miranda and Sons Automotive, Bridgeport Auto Glass, Ramirez Spanish Restaurant, Oz Funeral Home. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Welcome to Super Elite Entertainment. You already know I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. We are here broadcasting from my home, actually. Not tonight. We're not in the studio tonight in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, but we're actually here at home, and you already know why I would be broadcasting from my house, because basically we are all currently in quarantine, and um, we all know that we are being affected by what's being called the COVID, COVID-19, the coronavirus um, not only in Connecticut, but it's worldwide right now. And it's a big concern um, for everyone, for all of our lives. But with that said, I'm excited to be here tonight. I'm looking forward to this opportunity to be able to broadcast to you right through um, your iPad or whatever it is or your iPhone that you're watching on right now. And I got a, I got a pretty nice lineup tonight. Tonight, at some point, we're going to have uh, Jason Cup Session. Who is, a, who is a financer and branch manager for one of the local banks here in uh, the state of Connecticut. And he's going to come in and he's going to give us a lot of, I want to say basic, but really important information in regards to small business. If you're a small business owner and if you're watching right now, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere because tonight, Jason Cupsession, who is a financial uh, branch manager at one of the local banks here in the state of Connecticut is gonna come onto the show via satellite. Everyone, all the guests that I have lined up tonight is gonna to be coming on via satellite. I also have a cousin of mine named Lisa Ortiz who's way out in Tampa, Florida. And she's gonna come out momentarily in a few minutes and she's gonna let us know about how things are playing out out there in Florida in regards to COVID-19. Also, I have state representative Chris Rosario, who's going to be coming on to the show as well tonight, giving us an update on all the di different things that are taking place throughout the state of Connecticut as well. So really quick, what I want to do is I want to remind you guys that are watching right now that if you're listening on our podcast, whether it's Anchor, Spotify, or on our Apple podcast, I want to welcome you to the show tonight. Thank you for tuning in. If it's not for you guys tuning in on a weekly basis, we will not be able to do this. Perez tire center located at 72 Milton street in bridgeport connecticut perez tire center is slashing the competition with a full vehicle 45 dollar alignment perez tire center is located at 72 Milton street in bridgeport connecticut also we want to mention aces bell bond yasmin khan quick response 24 7 easy payment 203-257-6228 aces bell bond also say habla espanol also, we want to mention Evolution Sports Bar. Currently at this time, Evolution Sports Bar, which is located at 1279 North Avenue in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Evolution Sports Bar right now is currently closed due to the order of the state of Connecticut. But we're hoping that Evolution Sports Bar eventually at some point quickly will be able to open up all over again for business. Also, I need to mention Miranda and Sons Automotive, located at 360 Avon Street, Miranda and Sons Automotive, they are also open for business right there in Stratford, Connecticut. If you need brakes, electrical system, diagnosis check, head gasket, AC, tune-ups, front end, struts, full general auto repairs, call Lewis Miranda at Miranda and Sons Automotive right there in Stratford, Connecticut. Also, I need to mention Spark City Smoke and Vape Shop. Spark City Smoke and, and Spark City Smoke and Vape Shop are also open. They are a essential business establishment. So Spark City Smoke and Vape is open right there in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. If you need cigarettes, lotto, uh, tobacco, vape products, smoking products, if you want to just go there and hang out in the lounge, the cigar lounge, visit. Spark City Smoking Vape, which is located right there next door to Bob's Discount Furniture in downtown Bridgeport. Bridgeport Auto Glass is also open in the city of Bridgeport. Bridgeport Auto Glass is located at, at 1227 Barnum Avenue in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And finally, finally, I need to mention Ramirez Spanish Restaurant located at 1234 East Main Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. They also are currently closed. They will be closed for the next two weeks. 
But once they are up and running again, visit Romero Spanish Restaurant right there on East Main Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. They specialize in seafood and churrasco. Lunch, dinner, wines, takeout, catering, and free delivery is always available right there at Ramirez Spanish Restaurant. So with that said, again, I'm excited to be here broadcasting live actually from my home. And um, we're going to take a quick commercial break. I'm going to be showing a couple of music videos. I have a couple of guests that will be coming on onto the show. I have my cousin Lisa Ortiz, who's located in Tampa, Florida. She's going to come on and give us a, a, a an update on everything that's taking place up there in Florida. Also, we have Jason Copsession, who is a financer and branch manager located um, here in the state of Connecticut. He's going to be coming on and giving us some really really important information especially if you're a business owner a small business owner also christopher rosario state representative will be coming out to give us a, an update on what's taking place there in hartford at the capitol again i'm your host jason rodriguez we'll be right back momentarily from this commercial break don't go anywhere guys <laughs> Cero besitos, cero apretón de mano Cubrirnos la boca si todos se muerto nos damos No podemos tocar la cosa sin protección Y evitemos en lugares públicos aglomeración Si tú de verdad me quieres, salúdame de lejito Es la mejor muestra de afecto que yo necesito Unidos podemos, cuidémonos todito Y a ese virus le ganamos trabajando en equipo All right, you guys, welcome back to Super League Entertainment. Again, I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. Hopefully, you guys are able to hear me on the other end of this broadcast. Um, there's a bunch of people that are watching right now. So listen, if you're watching, let me know if you can hear me clearly on this broadcast because sometimes, from time to time, we have technical difficulties. Can you hear me on this broadcast? Somebody let me know um, as we proceed on with the show. But without further ado, what I want to do right now is I want to bring in my cousin, Lisa Rodriguez, who is way out in Tampa, Florida, and uh, she's going to come and give us an update on what's taking place there in Tampa. All right, Lisa, so you ready? She's on standby. Here we go with my cousin, Lisa. Lisa, how you doing? Hi, Jason. How you doing over there? Pretty good. Pretty good. We're here. Yep, I can hear you clearly. Hopefully, people out there can hear you as well. Um... Well, first of all, I just want to introduce you to the viewing audience. For the people who don't know you, you're my cousin, Lisa um, Ortiz. You're located right now via satellite in Tampa, Florida. And as you know, we're all locked in, shut in at home. We're all undergoing quarantine. And, um, you know, with that said, I just want you to give the viewing audience an update on what's taking place up there in Florida, Tampa, Florida. So yes, unfortunately, um, you guys are better. You guys are in a better position than we are right now. Our mayor, um, she has been fighting for us to go on on, on a stay, stay, you know, stay home. Um, and they're arguing whether they should put us at a stay home or put us at a curfew. And the difference between both of those are if we're put on curfew, that means that we won't be able to go out of our home to go anywhere um, unless it's an emergency, you know. Um, now, if they put us to stay at home, like they've um, actually implemented in, in your state where you're living at and in New York, then that would give us the option to go out and do things that are important and, and, and you know if you have to go to the grocery store go here or go there you know things that are important that you have to get done so you got a few people coming on today so i'm going to do this as quick as i can uh -huh. but just thinking about our position right now yep you have to be your own advocate you have to do your own research because unfortunately our government is not helping with anything with that, okay? I don't trust my government. You have a mayor and governor that should be working together, and they're not, they're against each other, and they're not implementing what the medical professionals are telling them to do. This is a problem, okay? My problem is, the first time this was even mentioned, and you think about it, our governor mentioned this March 1st, 
Hillsborough County and Manatee counties are one of the two of the biggest counties in the state of Florida that are seeing more and more cases going on with this coronavirus. Um, what's happening? Why are they holding? Why are they waiting to put a stay at home? You have to do this because people are going to die. They're telling you, the mayor's saying people are going to die. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some people don't have a voice to hear people and say, you know what? I have to go to work. I have to do this. I have to do that. No, your life is important. You have to be your own advocate. And I will give you a lot of different scenarios. If you are going through medical situations, I have an underlying medical condition, um, an autoimmune deficiency that makes me vulnerable to this unfortunate uh, 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 mystery or disease that's going on, invisible disease that's going on. No one has eyes for it, you know? And, and you have to take care of yourself. And I'll tell you for an example, Friday I wasn't feeling good. The pollen count is high over here and I suffer from asthma. My allergies and asthma was acting up, and Saturday night, and not breathing well, I reached out to my my physician that takes care of my asthma. Me, my doctor, ordered me and ordered me to stay at home. I'm on a stay at home right now due to my and I, I'm telling you, people. I, I was in fear of hospitals just not safe right now. You have to make sure you take care of yourself. This is real, people. This is real. And and I'll tell you another thing. Wash your hands. Wash things they're touching if you're going outside. Wipe down those steering wheels. Don't bring things home because, like I said, this is and it's killing people. Now, my people set up hotlines for you to call and there's also websites that you can call and one of them apartment center they have a number 1-866-779-6171 this florida department of health for covid 19 if you have any questions people shall tell you reach out to your physician if you can stay safe, you reach out because I do not go to the hospital. I will call you if your medication doesn't work in an hour. She had my medication expedited at the local pharmacy here. My husband picked it up and with it not feeling a lot better, but I'm still home. She directed me to stay home because like I say, I have an underlying vulnerable condition that can make me even more sick if I was even to get in contact with this kind of virus. So there's a lot of people out there that I'm sure have my share my same situation. Be your advocate for yourself. Reach out to your physicians. Don't go to places that you know people are going to be there. I, I, I want to take my hat off to everybody in the medical field and all the people that are working for us thank you god bless you and i hope that god put his angels around you and protect you from all the things that are going on right now but unfortunately we have to be a voice for ourselves because here in the state of florida our government are not even getting together to make one decision and that decision is to keep people at home we are behind this. Today, the, the 24th, we are way behind this. This started coming out in the end of February, the beginning of March. How many more people do they need to see die for them to start people adjusting them to do so? So I just share my story with you. I hope that you guys, if you are having anything going up to your physician let them know what's going on going to the hospitals places that come into car ah, are they cleaning these places come on so people get the county of where you live at and read look through what you're you know see what's going on in, in your community be a silent mouth don't cover your eyes to this because it's not going away. And we all need to stick together each other by informing each other. Perfect. All right, Lisa. Well, listen, 
I appreciate <laughs> but, um, no, no, is no, that. But flat people know that. <laughs> no, that's good. There's a, there was a lot of passion that you were expressing there. And it, uh, really quick, there's people that on the other end watching live on Facebook. It who, is. Who, who are saying that there's an echo in the background. And um, I just want to ask the people that are watching, is there still an echo in the background or is the echo gone? Can somebody let me know who's watching live right now? Is the echo still there or is the echo gone? Is there still an echo there or is the echo gone? For all you, for, for you guys that are watching right now live, is there an echo there or is the echo gone? I, I have high ceilings, so I don't know. Maybe that's what's doing it because I have high ceilings. Maybe, I don't know. All right. Well, no, there's not uh, an echo. Yo, okay. really a conversation oh, there's not an echo. I appreciate you, uh, your willingness to come out to the show and to let, let us know what's going on there in Florida. And um, I appreciate the uh, information that you shared with the uh, with the viewing audience. And um, I hope that um, everything works out for you. You stay healthy up there and, and we'll be in contact, all right? I sure will. And Jason, I want to thank you because, you know, I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of the, and I'm very proud of the you're giving to all our people. And I'll tell all of you people are our small business communities. Even if you need to eat, because we have to help them too. These people they live within our community help each other. And if you have it, support, support each other. That's all I can say. Love each other, support each other, inform yourself, and you'll be good. Trust me. Perfect. All right. Elisa, thank you very much. God bless and take care. We'll be in contact. All right. Thank you, Jay. Have a good day, guys. Keep safe. All right, you guys. Again, welcome back to Super League Entertainment. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. And uh, we just had Lisa um, Ortiz from Tampa, Florida, who's actually a family member of mine, a cousin of mine. And she's way out there in Florida. And, um, you know, I have people telling me that there's an echo in the background. So, again, um, I did hear the echo. It was coming, I believe, from her end. But can you guys hear me clearly? Because I don't want to proceed with the show because we have so much going on here tonight. I don't want to proceed with the show if there's going to be an echo in the background. I want to troubleshoot that immediately. So if you watch it right now, somebody comment down below and let me know that you can hear me clearly and effectively as of right now on the other end of this line. Let me know, somebody. Let me know if you can hear me clearly. All right, so with that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back momentarily in a second. Antes de comer algo, cuando toca cualquier cosa, y si abres una puerta, para que el coronavirus vea que somos bacanas. Yeah. Cero besitos, cero apretón de mano, cubrirnos la boca si se muerto el nudamos. No podemos tocar la cosa sin protección, y evitemos en lugares públicos aglomeración. Si tú de verdad me quieres, salúdame de lejito, es la mejor muestra de afecto que yo necesito. Unidos podemos, cuidémonos todito, y a ese virus le ganamos trabajando en equipo. What's up, you guys? Listen, really quick, I want to just let you know that Spark City Smoke and Vape Shop, which is located right here in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, even though most of the businesses in the city are closed due to COVID-19, Spark City Smoke and Vape Shop is open for business. Located right here across the street from Troop G State Police Barracks. So again, Spark City Smoke and Vape right here in Bridgeport, Connecticut is open for business seven days a week from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. every single night. Spark City Smoke and Vape, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Come on down. All right, you guys, welcome back to Super Elite Entertainment. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. Again, we're here broadcasting from my home. I want to say from our studio in the city of Bridgeport, but we're not in Bridgeport right now. We're broadcasting from my, from my home. As you already know, pretty much everyone that's at the other end of this broadcast we are in quarantine. Everyone is being held in their house and, um, you know, for good measure, for good cause. And we all have to take that uh, 
you know, precautionary uh, uh, state of mind towards what's taking place throughout the world and also here in the state of Connecticut. Um, but really quick, if you're watching, I want to ask you to please press um, that share button and share this live broadcast into your timeline. Let somebody know um, that, that, that you know me. Let them know that tonight I have Jason Concepcion, who's a financer and a branch manager for a local bank here in the state of Connecticut. I mean, he's also the treasurer for USA Boxing. We'll talk about boxing a little bit, just a little bit. Um, there's not much going on in the boxing industry, as a matter of fact, as of right now, especially um, in regards to USA Boxing. But, again, I have Jason Cupsis-Young here, uh, finance branch manager for a local bank. And what I want to do is I want to pull Jason into the picture uh, momentarily. But, again, listen, if you're watching, press that share button and share this live broadcast into your timeline. Let someone know that we're broadcasting tonight, and Jason is going to drop the bomb. He's going to give us some really important information, especially if you are a small business owner. So without further ado, let me introduce to you guys right now, Mr. Jason Cupsis. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing well. I'm blessed. Thank you for having me on the show, Jason. Appreciate being here. How are you doing? Good, good, man. So um, really, really excited to have you here on the show. And, uh, you know, the motive was to talk about the, you know, talk about boxing, USA boxing, and all that kind of stuff. And that's that's what you do on the side from your profession, because in your profession, you're a finance financer and also a branch manager at a local bank here in the state of Connecticut. And the purpose of you coming on the show is not only to talk about boxing, but to talk about COVID-19, the effects that it's having on small businesses and the, and the effects it's having on people in general and their financial matters. And of course, everyone is concerned about their money. They're concerned about their finances. Uh, businesses statewide are on lockdown, shutdown, restaurants, bars, uh, barbershops, you name it. Everyone is feeling the effect of the COVID-19. So, you know, what I want to do right now is I want to turn it immediately over to you so you can take the floor and then we'll work from there, Jason, because I know you have so much to share with the viewing audience. Appreciate that, Jason. Again, thank you for having me. Uh, so first, I'll start in my capacity as a, a board member for USA Boxing. Um, as of right now, uh, events are postponed, um, and we cannot restart events until we get to go ahead from the, the main office in Colorado, and also from uh, the regulatory uh, the regulated combat sports in Connecticut um, to also release us to have events as well as to have the boxing gyms open back up for, to the public for training. So this poses a couple of uh, difficulties for our, our gyms at large. Uh, if folks aren't able to come in to train, uh, they aren't able to pay their dues. Mm. And those dues support the gyms. Also, if we can have shows, a lot of the local gyms, when they have the club shows, this is the livelihood of the uh, their bills and a lot of these gyms they do an amazing job with the youth of our uh, cities and towns and they often don't charge a membership fee uh, for youngsters and so uh, being released and we all go back to business as usual how long is it going to take for the boxing gym to get back on their feet and that's a concern that we have uh, nationwide because at uh, USA Boxing shut down uh, a lot of things nationwide, including the Western qualifiers. And we just got word um, late yesterday that the 2020 Tokyo Olympics has been postponed mm -hmm. and it's likely to happen in another year. So logistically, that is going to pose a lot of problems for athletes who were gearing up for Tokyo and the qualifiers that were supposed to be happening right now to then kind of, you know, change gears and then time everything to be ready for the 2021 summer games in Tokyo. So that's causing a big disruption. And on the the greater local economy, Main Street is really suffering uh, because non-essential businesses have to close. And in turn, uh, loss of revenue means loss of jobs. You, you know, as much to a person with business, their number one concern is trying to find a way to pay their employees. They understand that this is a external, not part of the financial machine, you know, 
what is causing this downturn. It's a natural disaster, which is what we really should call it. Uh, where a virus is disrupting supply chain, it's disrupting transportation, it's disrupting uh, our daily lives, it's disrupting the educational system. All of these disruptions lead to uh, uncertainty, and uncertainty causes uh, a lot of volatility in the stock markets. So that's what you're seeing where the Dow was close to 30,000. I see it dropped to under 20,000. It was up 2,300 points today uh, with news of a stimulus package coming from the government. So there's a lot of things in flux right now. And unfortunately, um, folks are having to stay home and figure out ways to uh, make ends meet. So one of the things that the government is um, likely to do in the coming days is uh, dole out a check. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring out this, uh, this stimulus uh, package is because we have to be careful of fraudsters vector for scammers and and steal money from you. Excuse me. So one of the things to watch out is any text that needs to be from the government asking for information to claim your stimulus check. The government will not reach out to you through that vector and they're not gonna uh, ask you to give you the full social security number date of birth, bank account number, and things like that. That's going to come in an official document where if you want to uh, have it direct deposited, they're going to do that through it. The second thing to keep an eye out for is fake and treasury this, checks. Really, really quick, because I want you to just repeat what you said in, in regards to the stimulus check. You said that the government will not reach out directly to you. So I want the people to understand that. That's really important because I know there's a lot of fake, false calls that are being made to people trying, I mean, it's a scam. And they're trying to scam people to get their social security number, to get their date of birth, their address, their, their personal Bank account account. number. So I just- So it's really important to, to, to watch. And uh, watch out for is if you receive a check, take a good look at it, okay? And if in that receipt of that check, it, it says in a letter that they overpaid you, and to cash the check or go get gift cards send those back to the government or uh, give the bank number back on the form and send it back so they can draw out the overage, that's a scam. What's going to happen is that check is going to be fake. It's going to be no good. You're going to send, you typically will send, send the checks out for under $3,000. And what they'll do is they'll ask you to send back 1200 a 1000 800 1500 half of the check. You send that money back out, and then when that check gets collected, I've seen countless people get scammed by this figure out how are they going to come up with $3,000 to bring their bank account back into good standing. Um, I hate would hate to see people um, go through that. So... The best thing to do is to actually go to the official government websites, um, call the IRS office, the Social Security office directly uh, or, or your town hall and ask them directly, hey, you know, I received a phone call. I received this correspondence. Is this legit? OK. For small businesses, uh, it's a really tough time. And I would recommend that every small business owner speak with their banker and talk about ways that they can get access to capital to get them through this tough time as production has to shutter, bars are closed, restaurants are closed, salons, barber shops, day spas. Any non-essential uh, business has to be closed right now, so that means a loss of revenue. How are you going to make it through? Uh, thankfully, uh, you know, with a lot of the banks, they're going to go off of last year's tax returns. So this year's hit won't necessarily an application, but that's going to be in a case by case with each individual banks. For individuals, some banks are coming out with temporary assistance loans, up uh, some more up to five thousand dollars. Talk to your bankers, see what programs they have up to, to get you through the shutdown. You have to reach out for help. Uh, you know, bankers should be. You know, giving you a call, just checking on everything and financial wellness and, uh, you know, utilize the the, uh, the resources that you have through your bank in this tough time. Uh, the government is also 
with uh, some loan guarantees for businesses uh, to put capital back into the market to get people paid, to get business back up and running when things open back up. So that way we don't see business go bankrupt, business go under, and then these uh, temporarily laid off or furloughed employees become permanently laid off and then they have to go find somewhere else to work. That's what we don't want to see. Yeah. So if anyone that's watching right now, Jason, especially a uh, small business owner, whether it's a barbershop, a bar, a salon, I mean, tons of little business, small little bodega on the corner. I mean, and, and, and right now they're on lockdown, shutdown, and they're not, they don't have revenue coming in. Um, best thing to do is to reach out to you so that they, I mean, so they can have a one-on-one -on -one with you. I mean, would that be the best approach in order for you guys? Not to necessarily. So, okay. So I'm here as an advisor to the community. I'm not necessarily myself. Um, as, uh, you know, what I most, uh, the thing that I most want to convey in this conversation that we're having, Jason, is to avail people of the resources that they already have and things that they can do with the relationships that they already have. Uh, you know, if you bank with a particular bank and you know your banker down on Main Street, pick up the phone and call that person and ask them, hey, you know, this is what I'm going through. Is Do you have anything that can help me out? If you want to reach out to me, I'm happy to help any anyone that uh, reaches out. Um, I'm easy to find. And uh, but, you, you know, it's really important that you find out what you can do to get yourself through this situation before you have to go do a withdrawal from your retirement account uh, or burn through your savings. Or, you know, one of the things that you can do is if you have equity in your house and you're a homeowner, um, let's say your house is worth 200000 you only have... 50000 left on a mortgage, you can go get a home equity line of credit and you can use that to, uh, to get you through this crisis. There's a lot of financial tools to make this hurt a little bit less. Uh, and uh, if you don't know what they are, talk to your local banker. They should know and they'll be happy to help you out. I'm quite sure. Absolutely. So, and for you guys that are watching right now, in case you don't know who the gentleman is that's on the screen alongside me, his name is Jason Capsacion. He's a treasurer for USA Boxing in the state of Connecticut. Also, he is a financer and bank manager for a local bank in the state of Connecticut, which, which we will not mention. But all we're doing right now is just giving you some insight, some, some understanding, and some tools on how you can go about resolving or maybe you know coming up with a resolution in regards to um, dealing with the situations that you're, you're having to face as a small business owner. And again, Jason, for the people that are watching, um, if they want to reach out to you, they can always reach out to you through Instagram, Facebook, and what other route, Jason? Uh, LinkedIn. And um, if you go to my LinkedIn page, uh, you can definitely get me on there. Um, and uh, my information is also on uh, the ctusaboxing.org website. And you can find my information there. And, you know, it's really important. <sighs> You know, this is once every hundred years. The last time we were faced with a uh, viral calamity of this uh, magnitude was the Spanish flu of 1918. Uh, the Spanish flu of 1918, it was an influenza and uh, it, uh, it killed over 50 million people. And that happened at a time when the population was only 2 billion. The po world population at this point is over 7 billion. So we really need to take this seriously because the, the typical mortality rate of a flu, of a regular flu, is 0.01%. Mm. The mortality rate thus far for COVID-19 is between 2 and 3%, okay? And if you extrapolate the number of people that are infected, if let's say 500 million people get infected with COVID, Two to three percent of five million, five hundred million people is a lot of people. So we really need to take this seriously. We need to um, make sure that we keep updating with the bulletins. I know that it hurts to keep the businesses closed, but uh, community spread is a real thing. Uh, for instance, uh, there was one party in Westport where uh, there was a 40, 40th birthday party in Westport, and one person was infected and went into that party and was there wasn't social distancing at the time it was before everything came out 
And uh, that one party uh, now spread those people all over the country, even as far as South Africa. So it's, it's really important to understand some, another term called the r Um The r not stands for if someone is infected, how many people will then they go and infect? Um, a really high heart uh, r not uh, disease is something like smallpox, where if you have smallpox, practicing social distancing, you're going to affect a lot of people. Uh, Dr. Fauci of the CDC um, infectious diseases uh, mentioned that if we can get the R not down below two, so if we're the one person, they affect we should start uh, but right now we are still on the upswing. New York is uh, seeing cases double every three days and that's right next door. So what can you do for your family? What can you do uh, to protect yourself? You know, we got to get out, we got to get some fresh air, you know, so going for walks and keeping distance from passersby is one great thing. Uh, another thing is uh, periodically um, wipe down all the door handles, the door handles to the fridge, um, uh, door handles to the cabinets, uh, the bathrooms, the faucets, from time to time with disinfectant. Take off your shoes when you come in the house is another thing that you can do. Um, wash your hands before you eat. Obviously, wash your hands when you um, leave the bathroom. After finishing an activity where you're touching things outside of the house, uh, wash your hands. Take a sanitizer, wipe down your steering wheel and your shifter knob and the door handles to the outside of your car and inside of the car. Anything where you uh, touch, try to keep it to the fear of uh, what everybody else is saying. So just make sure that I'm not telling you what to think. I'm just saying, make sure that you're verifying the source that you're getting the information from and then in independently. So one of the things that I have um, that I sent over to Jason is the uh, COVID-19 update for yesterday as of 10 o'clock. And if you bring up uh, the map of Connecticut, it's going to show you all of uh, the towns that have confirmed cases. Now, yes. This is one thing that uh, you, you have to um, understand is that these are reported cases. So because we don't have enough tests to test everybody, people who are having stay home. So they might have a case of COVID-19, but haven't been confirmed with it because they're self-quarantined. Okay, so on this map in Connecticut, you can see um, has uh, some cases, Rocky Hill, um, there's a spattering of cases uh, all around, but if, if you take a look at Fairfield County, which is closest to New York, that's where you see almost like a cluster of uh, more cases, particularly in Westport, as I mentioned before, um, that party was where um, a lot of cases then cropped up. Mm. So, okay, and I understand that. So what's the good news? The good, there's two things that you can um, that I can say um, right now. Uh, for me personally, uh, I'm enjoying the time that, uh, although I still have to go to work because I'm deemed an essential business, I'm enjoying the time that I come home and spending with my family. My wife yes. is working from home, my son's home from school, and we're having family night, we're watching movies, it was Taco Tuesday. So sitting around the table, turning off the uh, electronic devices, and we're really enjoying that time. The second thing that's some good news is that where this virus began in Wuhan, in uh, Hubei province, in China, they're having consecutive days with no new cases reported. So they're starting to see the other side of that curve where the number of cases are starting to drop off. Mm -hmm. And Italy's having a really tough time of it. Part of that has the makeup of the country, that country is a lot grayer than the United States. There's a lot more people in their 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, even into the hundreds in Italy, uh, probably because of that Mediterranean diet. They eat really good there. Um, but uh, hopefully if uh, people follow the um, the president said that this will be over by Easter, I would take that with a grain of salt. We have to see what the cases tell us. And again, hey, Jim, if I was watching, New York. when I was watching the news today, uh, the president was talking about he's ready to get back 
you know, open things up and get back to business. I mean, is that something you you think we're ready for? He wants to get things back by April 12th, uh, by Easter. Again, uh, that's a difficult prediction to make because we don't know where we're going to be on the curve at that point. And what the scientists and the doctors are saying is that so you have a curve, okay? So you have uh, cases, okay, and then the infection cases go up, they go up, and then they peak, and then they begin to go down. So what we're trying to do is instead of having the cases do this and have a really high spike, we're trying to have it be flat so that not as many people are. Two countries have been doing a really good job with this, and that is South Korea and Japan. Um, their curves are a lot flatter than what we saw in Italy, China, and now in the United States. Um, so again, um, just keep it, uh, an ear out for uh, the bulletins from the government, you know, Washington. Touch your face, uh, practice social, stay home, um, keep touch points clean. And again, if you're having financial struggles, you know, everybody pays into the unemployment system. If, don't, you know, when I was first unemployed, you know, I thought I was too proud to, to uh, claim unemployment. Um, I had some savings, but you know what? Um, it did help me out. Um, so I'm not ashamed to admit that, you know, I was without a job at one point and it did help me. Um, so there's no shame in getting and get asking for unemployment help um, or nutritional assistance. And the most important thing that I could say tonight, Jason, is yes. that we can't forget who we are. We can't forget who we are. We can't forget our neighbors. We can't for, forget our friends. We need to check up on them. If someone is struggling, drop off a bag of groceries. If they need, you know, a coffee, you know, little acts of kindness during this tough time when people are struggling can really soften the blow and help people's day um, and make people's days and, um, and trust in God and God will deliver us from this unseeable evil. And I believe that. And I'm praying for everybody uh, in our community and um, just good luck to everybody. And please if you have any questions or if I can help uh, in any way. Excellent, Jason. Well, listen, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm excited that you were willing to come on tonight and share all the information that you were able to share with the viewing audience um, at such an important, crucial time in, you know, in, in, in our days. Um, a lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are feeling the pains and they're going through it financially. And not only that, but also, you know, mentally. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm really glad that you were willing to come on here and and to just drop some really, really good information uh, to the people that are watching. As a matter of fact, there's people leaving comments that are watching on Facebook. For example, um, there's someone out here named Cheryl Butler. Uh, she says, how bad was the impact for Bridgeport? How many patients in Bridgeport? And um, I would like to know about the small business help after this. I mean, you really can't respond to the Bridgeport part because you're, you know, you're up there. And I, I, actually, I can't. Okay. Uh, so in Bridgeport, uh, there are a total of nine confirmed cases in Bridgeport as of yesterday at 10 o'clock. Uh, so again, that doesn't mean, you know, go panic and get your hands on, uh, you know, stay home, avoid crowds, and um, just, you know, keep your hands clean and, and uh, don't touch your face. Uh, if you are around someone sick, uh, then self-quarantine yourself and stay away from the rest of your family. And I know it's but this is just something that we have to do in the short term to prevent something that's going to last long term. The same person on here is saying that um, she's saying community, community helping each other is the only way we will help encourage the community more. So basically, I, I believe what she's trying to say is us following the instructions that are being given by the government by the state that we live in, if we stick to those instructed instructions, uh, there's a possibility that we might make things a little bit better. I couldn't agree more. This crisis that we're facing is this generation's 9-11. Uh, when 9-11 happened, I was, uh, what was it, 2001? So I was uh, 18, uh, uh, 17 years old. I was 17 years old. Uh, 18 years old in 9-11, and I know that that moment changed my life forever um, in how I viewed the world. Um, I lost my innocence, uh, in a sense, and my naivete 
uh, that day uh, when I saw those planes hit the towers. Uh, and this is another seminal event for this generation. And uh, I, I hope that we as a country, we as a community, we as families do a good job. One last statement I want to read, Jason, really quick before I let you go is um, another gentleman on here, gentleman on here named Johans J. Wills, who's actually a music producer. Uh, Wilson says, great topic. A lot of small business owners need direction on how to keep income coming in during this pandemic. Um, so basically, you know, all the information you're giving out is right on time because people need to know the truth and people need to know how to go about handling the situation that we're all facing right now. Absolutely. I strongly urge any small business owner um, to utilize uh, SBA loans, uh, business lines of credit through their local institutions uh, that they're working with uh, to get them capital to get through a um, uh, certain time being. Uh, it, it's also an opportunity um, to where if you do have the capital to stock up on materials, because uh, you are seeing a drop in commodities, uh, oil, steel, copper, um, things of that nature are coming down in price because uh, the demand is dropping off. Um, so, you know, in every, in every, you know, there's an opportunity um, to really do something good for uh, the community and also uh, to um, protect your business. Excellent, Jason. Well, listen, man, again, I want to thank you for coming out to the show and being able to speak to our viewing audience. There's a lot of people that have been watching throughout the duration of the show and uh, the information that you presented, that you've thrown out there, I'm sure has will fall on good ground. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you for coming out to the show, Jason. Any final words before I let you go? Everyone stay safe, um, check in on each other, be kind and, um, and pray. Perfect, Jason. Well, thank you very much, brother. God bless. Have a good night. And we're going to reschedule for you to come down to the studio because technically you were supposed to be at the studio in the city of Bridgeport sitting on the hot seat tonight. But due to us closing the studio down tonight, um, you weren't able to come down and be a part of that. But we're going to get you in there in a couple of weeks. All right. Sounds good. Jason. All right, brother. God bless you and have a good night. All right, you guys, so listen, for you guys that are watching, that was Jason Copsession. He's a financer and also a, a branch manager for a local bank here in the state of Connecticut. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a quick commercial break. But when I come back, hopefully I'll have State Representative Chris Rosario from the state of Connecticut um, on standby momentarily. So don't go anywhere, guys. Again, I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. We'll be right back momentarily. Hi, welcome to ACES Bail Bonds. Do you need information regarding bail bonds and the bail bond process? Contact us at ACES Bail Bonds, where we are happy to give you a free bail consultation. You are in capable hands with our reputable agency. For fast, reliable bail bond service, get out of jail fast with ACES Bail Bonds. You can save time and money by calling ahead. We'll have the forms ready for you with everything handled privately, discreetly, and confidentially at our office. For fast, reliable bail bond service, call ACES Bail Bonds now. Welcome to Ramirez Restaurant. Hey, Echo Tuesday. Echo Tuesday. <laughs> so, yeah, the echo was from um, echo was from uh, the guest. And welcome back to Super League Entertainment. I'm your host, Jason Rodriguez. Again, we're here broadcasting, not from our studio in the city of Bridgeport, but actually from my home. And um, as you already know, most of us are at home. We're locked in. We're under quarantine because of the COVID-19 that's affecting us worldwide. And, you know, with that said, we started off the show tonight with my cousin, Lisa Ortiz, who's located way out there in Tampa, Florida. She came on and she was able to update us on the different things that are taking place there in the state of Florida. And then 
we just had Jason Cup Session, who's from right here in Connecticut. He's a uh, uh, the treasurer for USA Boxing. Also, he is the uh, he's a bank uh, bank branch manager for a local bank here in the state of Connecticut. He gave us some updates in regards to uh, small business small business management and how you can go about uh, resolving your financial matters. But without further ado, I'm excited to have State Representative Chris Rosario. I believe Chris is at his home right now. Um, I believe in the city of Bridgeport. But without further ado, let me bring Chris into the picture. Chris, how you doing, brother? I'm good. Yourself? Thanks for having me on the program. Absolutely, Chris. So um, really quick, Chris, we've been talking about, as you already know, um, COVID-19. You were just recently in the uh, studio alongside State Senator Dennis Bradley. And you guys chopped it up and just went deep and, and gave us some updates um, last Tuesday on the show. But now we're broadcasting here. You're via satellite. I'm here in my home. And I wanted to bring you on to the platform again tonight so that you can give the viewing audience an update on what's taking place here in the state of Connecticut. Because I know you're actively involved. You're a state representative for the 128th district of the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And there's a lot of concerned citizens statewide, but also in our own city. So I just wanted you to come on, give us an update on what's going on as of right now, Chris. Well, thanks for having me on again. I just wanted to give an update to everyone out there. Uh, I've been actually been getting a lot of calls from folks who um, the FCC actually signed an agreement uh, not to interrupt any service uh, for many of the utilities, uh, uh, that being included uh, cable and internet service. And I've been getting a lot of calls from constituents that that hasn't been the case. They've had their service uh, terminated uh, via uh, Optimum. So I actually uh, posted my information uh, earlier on my Facebook page and anybody out there who's had any interruption of service, whether it's cable internet, uh, please contact me in my office. Uh, my email is Christopher.Rosario at CGA.CT.gov. Uh, and my, even though we're working remotely, I'm home. Uh, my staff is home, but we're readily available. We're communicating uh, throughout the day. As a matter of fact, I, I, I think I talk more to my staff now than, than I have when, when we're in session. But uh, uh, we, we all do that for you. But uh, I know there are currently nine cases of COVID uh, in Bridgeport. Uh, we were one of the first uh, communities to have drive-through uh, testing centers for COVID. Uh, and, and it's my understanding they're actually doing pop-up hospitals. Uh, they're anticipating um, uh, an overflow in our, our, our Bridgeport Hospital, St. Vincent's Hospital. So uh, I'm in the process of working uh, with the Department of Public Health uh, maybe possibly the, the being that Fairfield County is one of the hardest hit uh, hospital uh, areas for COVID, uh, having a pop-up hospital here in Bridgeport, uh, locations are to be determined, but uh, this is something very, very serious, folks. So the more you can stay home, uh, the, the more we can flatten the curve. That's right. And Chris, I want to thank you because you have been so active on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or whether it's on your website. I mean, keeping the public updated on how to go about managing their business, especially the small businesses, because we know, for example, one of our buddies' business there in the city of Bridgeport, Evolution Sports Bar, Evolution Barbershop. I mean, that's just a prime <laughs> example of, of what people are going through. I mean, Yoel can't open up his, his business, either of his businesses. He has no revenue coming in, and I'm sure that he's feeling the pain behind, you know, that situation. But, you know, you're active out there. You're you're you do what needs to be done as our state representative for the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, represented 128th district. And, um, you know, what, what's your message for the small business owner tonight, Chris, that that's going through what Yoel is going through? Because I can't even imagine what he's feeling right now at this time. Actually, I, I've been in communication pretty much most of the day with Al, Al Martinez, the owner of Al Millennium. Uh, cuts and uh, also uh, the Beauty Academy, and he's going through the same exact thing that Yoel was going, and he's not alone. We have a lot of uh, independent contractors that are barbers and stylists, tattoo artists, whatever the case may be, and I'm actually in the process of getting a, a frequently asked questions uh, a FAQ list for, for those folks from the Department of Labor, from the Department of Health to give them some direction uh, on how they can get through this crisis. And also uh, your previous guest, Mr. Concepcion, um, getting these small business owners uh, access to capital, uh, bridge loans, uh, access to, 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 you know, so they can survive this uh, run. Uh, you can prepare for a snowstorm. 
You can prepare for a hurricane. You don't prepare for a pandemic. It doesn't come up on a forecast. And it's just something that when it hits you, uh, it really could bring you down to your knees. But working together uh, with the community, because we can't do this alone. I can't do this alone as a state representative uh, and our elected leaders, and including the governor. We can't do this alone. We need the community's cooperation. And when we say stay home, stay home. Doesn't mean that you have to stay within your four walls. If you go out and get some, do some yard work, hang out on your porch with social distancing uh, considered. Um, just make sure that the less you have contact with people, the better. And you know what, Chris? At a time like this right now, I mean, great opportunity for us to take advantage to spend time with our family. For example, to spend time with your dog as you're holding your dog right now on the screen. Zoe. Um, <laughs> what's the dog? <laughs> Zoe. It's Zoe. a girl. Zoe, Zoe. Oh, okay. Um, great time to spend time with your, with your, with your family. You know, spend time with your dog, spend time with your kids. I mean, take a walk in the park. I mean, something simple as that. Doing what the government has instructed us to do. Social distance, staying at home. If you're feeling the symptoms, undergo quarantine. Uh, stay away from, you know, crowds over over 10 now. Let's keep it correct. Because it was 50, but now it's 10. A lot of churches, community faith based centers are uh, live streaming as we are tonight, live streaming at church services. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there, man, who, who are compliant. They're they're doing what's supposed to be done, but then there's the, the selective few that's just hard-headed and they're not following through with the instructions that have been given. So what's your message to those who aren't taking this situation as serious as it is, Chris? Uh, my message is to, you know, it's unfortunate, but uh, it's, there are people out there that may not have cared about breast cancer in the past until it happened in their family. Uh, there are people that did not care about um, mental health awareness uh, until it happened to their family. Don't wait until this happens to your family, because even though you may be a healthy carrier uh, like yourself and myself, but if you're infected and you go see your abuelita, and then now, you know, she's at Luz de Paz, now you're uh, gonna make sure that you're taking those precautions to make sure that others don't get sick. Please minimize your contact. If you have an elderly person that needs help, you know, give them a call. Keep your social distance. Make sure they got water, food, whatever the case may be. But please listen to the officials. Um, I know we're not we're not right all the time, but uh, this is a life and death situation. And please uh, keep your social distance from people. Absolutely. And one last thing I also want to mention, Chris, is that you know what? Everyone is on a rampage to get toilet tissue, paper, you know, paper towel and all that kind of stuff and to keep their food stocked. But keep in mind, you know, show, show, show a level of respect and concern for the elderly people. All right. The ones that are in the line trying to get the same items that you're trying to buy. You know, instead of you jumping in front of the line, let that 60, 70, 80 year old person get in front of you so that they can be able to get the items that they're trying to get the same way you are. I mean, let's, you know, show that level of respect because. I'm just, I'm just saying, Chris, I seen, you know, at the store the other day where there was some elderly people trying to get ahead and then the younger crowd was basically <clears throat> disrespectfully holding them back. I mean, you know what, let's just think about what we're going through. Let's take it another, let's take it to another different level and show that level of respect to the elderly and the adults who, listen, they are at risk more than we are, to keep, you know, to be honest with you. So I just wanted to mention that, Chris, what's your take? Well, my take is, you know, obviously I agree your same sentiments with you uh, as well, but also uh, let's keep in mind uh, a lot of these places where you're seeing this hoarding of uh, toilet paper and other items, uh, they, they, they can easily go uh, to a local merchant here in Bridgeport, uh, whether it's Gala Foods, Key Foods, Food Bazaar, a lot of those items, they're fully stocked. There is no shortage. There is no shortage. Even Stop and Shop, there's plenty of toilet paper. Every day they put out thousands of rolls of toilet paper. Uh, maybe we should stop eating. That way we don't need the toilet paper. All the snacks uh, that are lining up in your house right now. But uh, um, with, with that being said, I know some stores have dedicated certain hours uh, for those, either se seniors, elderly, or, or those with health complications, and I commend them for that. Yep. All right, Chris. So I just want to thank you for coming out to the show. I just wanted you to give the audience a brief update on what's taking place in the state. And uh, we know that you're actively involved in everything that's taking place up there in the capital of Hartford, Connecticut, as a state representative of the city of Bridgeport, the 128th district, you're out there pushing hard, man. And, and when your title is representative, that is exactly what you're doing. You are representing us to the fullest 
And I just want to tell you, I appreciate that. I see all the postings that you have on all of your sites, platforms, and uh, you're doing what we voted you into office to do. And uh, I just want to thank you for that, Chris. And, you know, we look forward to seeing uh, what 2021 brings on your behalf. All right, man. I really appreciate that. And again, uh, I have all my information, my contact information on Facebook, uh, on Instagram. Uh, if you have any questions, especially those small business owners that are looking for help to get those bridge loans, please contact me so I can get you to the right people. Excellent, Chris. Well, thank you very much, brother. I truly appreciate the opportunity. Have a good night, and we'll see you on the next round, brother. God, God bless. bless. Take care. God bless. All right, so for you guys that are watching live right now on Facebook or YouTube or listening to us on our podcast, whether it's eight, uh, Apple, Anchor, or Spotify, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When I come back, I'm going to be having the owner of Spark City Smoke and Vape located right here in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, Mr. Z will be on the show with us momentarily. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back momentarily from this commercial break. All right? Don't go anywhere. Welcome to Spark City Smoke and Vape located at 815 Lafayette Boulevard, Bridgeport, Connecticut. <laughs> interesting show tonight uh we've had a lot of guests come on to the show live from all over the place via satellite and um now we have you uh z you're the owner of thanks for uh, having Sports me Book and Vape, which is located in bridgeport connecticut right across the street from troop g next door to bob's discount furniture i wanted to bring you on to the show so that you can let the people know the viewing audience know that spark city smoke and vape in bridgeport and northern talk is open for business while yes, all it's the open mm -hmm. for now. It's, it's uh, for now. It's uh, open regular hours, six to 10. Uh, we didn't change our hours uh, because we still have our regular customers that come in around the same time in the morning, get their coffee, they get their cigarettes. So we haven't changed our hours unless something, you know, changes uh, as far as uh, rules and regulation goes. But if nothing further changes, we're keeping our regular hours from uh, six in the morning till ten in the evening. That's good. That's good. So, so the people that are watching, I want you guys to know that Spark City Smoke and Vape is open from six a.m. to ten in the evening. Um, they have Lotto. You want some candy? There's even candy there at Spark yeah, City. Yeah, we even have sodas. Yeah, you even got sodas. You got drinks. You want potato chip? It's there at Spark City. Yeah. You want your scratch off ticket? And also. They have the exclusive um, cigar lounge, and also you have the exclusive uh, 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 cigar. I mean, you, you, you're, you're, I want to say you have like a library of cigars, but you have your cigar. Uh, yes, we do. we do. We do have a pretty good uh, collection of cigars. I won't say to go actually, before we got this serious, uh, we started cleaning our stores uh, like twice every day. So every countertops, tables, everything is. Uh, Nice and clean. We have, um, you know, cleaning supplies in stock, so we're not going to run out of it. So it's never going to be dirty. So, yeah, stop by. You know, like I said earlier, if uh, if it comes to this that you cannot come out, but you need something, uh, just give us a call. Deliver it to your home or we'll work something out for that. Perfect, Z. All right, then, Z. So, you know, with that said, I truly appreciate you coming out to the show. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, God bless, brother. Have a good night, okay? You too. Take care. Thank you. All right. Thank you.